मनोज भाई गुड आफ्टरनून हेलो मनोज भाई क्या है मेरी आवाज नहीं जा रही हेलो मनोज सर इज नॉट एबल मनोज सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर के पास आवाज शायद जा नहीं रही सम प्रॉब्लम मनोज जी कैसे हैं गुड आफ्टरनून सर आवाज आ रही है मनोज शर्मा जी की आवाज नहीं आ रही नहीं आ रही है सर अभी, हाँ, अभी तो आ रही थी सर मैं कॉल करता हूँ सर हेलो सर 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 लगता है 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 उनका हैंग हैंग हो हो गया गया स्लो नेटवर्क
सर मेरी अभी बात हुई है सर दोबारा से कनेक्ट करेंगे सर अच्छा अच्छा बेटा अब हमें उसकी जो लिंक तू बनाएगा वो लिंक अगर हम कहीं भी डालेंगे तो वो लिंक चलेगा ना अच्छा अगर हम एस एस आर में डाल के भेज देंगे या अपलोड कर देंगे तो चलेगा ना वो लिंक खोल कर तो कोई इशू नहीं फिर हमें सर कनेक्शन हुआ क्या सर अभी ट्राई कर रहे हैं हेलो मनोज सर कैसे हैं आप हाँ मेरी आवाज आ रही है डॉक्टर मुझे आ रही है ओके डॉक्टर मनोज कैसे हैं ऑल वेल सर ऑल वेल सर हाउ आर यू सर एक्चुअली आई वाज स्पीकिंग टू माय आईटी टीम हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर अरुण कैसे समथिंग यस सर हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल सर हाई हेलो यस यस यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल ओके सर सर से से डीन सर वहां से सर से मैंने आपको मनोज जी आवाज सुन रहे हैं मेरी प्रॉब्लम है कुछ कुछ टेक्निकल इशू है डॉक्टर मनोज शर्मा कुछ प्रॉब्लम है वहां हाँ जी सर हाँ जी एक मिनट सर अभी मैं एक्चुअली हाँ मेरी आवाज आ रही है सर मुझे बिल्कुल क्लियर आ रही है स्टार्ट ओके सर या लेटर्स बिगिन सर सो गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ या डॉक्टर अरुण वुड यू इंट्रोड्यूस और शेल आई बिगिन यस सर यस सर No, 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 sir. We'll we'll start the session, sir. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, I welcome everybody uh, in the session of uh, pharmacy vigilance. We we have uh, Dr. Manoj Sharma, sir, from Win Medical. Yeah. He is going to deliver a lecture on pharmacy vigilance. Now, I would like to request uh, our dean, sir, to introduce, sir, to introduce uh, Manoj, sir. Please, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi. You are audible. Hello. जामिया हमदार एंड फर्स्ट ही हैज ज्वाइन एज ए लेक्चर अंडर माई सुपरविजन इन हरियाणा इन लेटर ऑन he has joined asia biotech and after that he has joined win medicare private limited new delhi and presently he is taking care of pharmaco vigilance department now gunjan you are requested gunjan ma'am yes sir ha ah, please so a very good afternoon to all of you i welcome everybody with tremendous pleasure today for this session that is on the event world pharmacist day 
the team that is transforming global health. Today, I'd like to introduce you to our guest speaker, that is Dr. Banu Sarma, sir. He is a PhD in clinical pharmacology with doctoral experience in pharmacovigilance and pharmacoepidemiology from University of Bordeaux to France. He is having more than 18 years of experience in pharmacovigilance, pharmacoepidemiology, drug discovery, and clinical research. He is the recipient of certificate on qualified person for pharmacovigilance from WHO and does International Society of Pharmacovigilance in London. He has also contributed to pharmacovigilance program of India as an expert member in quality review panel of National Coordination Center Pharmacovigilance Program India under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India. He has also assisted in the finalization of suspected adverse drug reaction reporting form and reviewed standard operating procedures for pharmacovigilance program of India. He also contributed to several book chapters on pharmacovigilance and published more than 20 research papers on drug safety in peer-reviewed index journals. He has a very exhaustive experience in the given field, but due to the shortage of time, we will start with the session of Dr. Manu Sarma, sir. So we are privileged to hear you today. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Gunjan, and thank you, uh of Professor uh, Dr. Vijinder Singh Sam and Dr. Arun Kumar and entire fraternity of Sharda University me uh, to deliver uh, a lecture in uh, this uh, auspicious world form and in fact I am privileged to be in interaction with you, the learned faculty and the students also. Uh, before uh, further, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, present you the, give you the topic introduction. I choose this topic and uh, why, uh, 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 like, uh, is being the core of the uh, uh, entire discussion it will be there for the next uh, 30 minutes. Uh, I will mean, just uh yes sir it's visible. Yes sir it's visible. Visible. Uh, just a moment. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, coming to the today's topic, that is flavor of pharmacovigilance as a career option. Hope uh, uh, there will be students. Uh, from the uh, B pharmacy, MSc, or some uh, BSc, or some uh, like uh, other uh, life sciences background as well, who will be attending the session. Now coming to the point that uh, first of all, like uh, why did I choose this topic? Is uh, just uh, I wish to uh, uh, just uh, express uh, one important thing that. Pharmacovigilance uh, is nowadays is a uh, has become a very uh, important from the aspect that the regulatory authorities now have the much more uh, uh, they have started putting emphasis on the uh, uh, drug safety aspects rather than the clinical research aspect or the uh, drug discovery aspects. Reason that like uh, that they want to know that what happens. To the drug when it is uh, it goes into the body and uh, how the life cycle of the drug can be decided uh, throughout the uh, uh, like as a uh, like uh, till the time it is there in the market. Now, just coming to the session now, uh, that the views and opinions, uh, which whatever will be expressed over here, they will be my individual uh, views. 
and they will be entirely based on my uh, experience so far in this field and uh, my interaction with the different stakeholders including uh, the uh, the academic fraternity and the industry representatives and as well as to the student community as well so uh, uh, so uh, now before uh, now uh, the introduction of the organization I, i felt that it is important to introduce not only myself but also to the organization where uh, i am affiliated actually so i am affiliated to an organization uh, that is uh, known as the uh, umesh modi group umesh modi group uh, uh, like uh, if you have heard about the uh, 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 later uh, bahadur uh, gujarmal modi sahab uh, uh, like uh, who founded this modi nagar city so it is his uh, like youngest son mr umesh modi who is the chairman and the president of the group and uh, under this group there are various companies uh, like uh, modi modi pharma group of companies which is the umbrella organization that organization there are there then uh, like different different uh, verticals are there which belong to the different companies like there we have the bin medicare the modi modi pharma which is a collaborative 50 50% joint venture between the uh, modi group as well as the modi pharma uk and then we have the revlon uh, might be uh, like uh, many of us might might, might be uh, listening to the uh, radio city 98.3 fm like we are the every morning like we have the advertisement related to the, related to the revlon products then we have the international operations uh, which are based in the bangladesh as well as in the uh, like the other markets then under the win medicare we have the win healthcare and win naturals and uh, under modi modi pharma we have the pain management division and the health and nutrition division we have uh, launched a new division which is a uh, like uh, sigutra it is in collaboration with the dupont the nutritional uh, products with us hope everybody is listening to me hello yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Okay. yeah actually I, i would like to have just uh, like uh, in between uh, like I, i will just disturb you so that just i just want to know whether we are not lost actually sure sure sir like the, the connection is not wrong i was... no no never no sir not at all sir well now coming to the key therapeutic segments so being a pharmaceutical company so uh, coming to the key therapeutic segments we have the key therapeutic segments uh, mainly into the cardiac then urology and respiratory and the pain management so these are the key therapeutic segments uh, with uh, which uh, we deal with and uh, uh, like uh, they are the niche products are based on the latest uh, 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 technology imbibed into them this is uh, the these are the this is a slide that shows the business partners to whom we are affiliated with we uh, we have collaboration with the international market leaders uh which include the many companies uh, including but not limiting to zembon uh, based in italy then sigma tau again based in italy and then norgene based in netherlands then anika therapeutics based in usa levy farm in greece and uh, then uh, there is a one more company uh, uh, uh that we have recently uh, collaborated with Uh, for our uh, like uh, products in the uh, like the uh, the cis countries these are our major brands nitro contain which is a, a continuous uh, based on the continuous release technology for nitroglycerin contain a uh, control these tablets of primadol hydrochloride then there is endicontin for endapamide pegicol which is a polyethylene glycol then soy broth which is a protein soy protein picontin z 
And these are actually some of the examples of the major brands, although uh, we boast of uh, more than uh, 80 products uh, which are uh, available but across the world and uh, in more than 120 countries uh, across the world. So, I hope I am audible this now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, the main topic is actually, let us come to the now main topic that is pharmacovigilance. Precisely speaking, uh, well, uh, first, uh, let just uh, now, uh, before going further, let me thank you, Professor Dr. Vijayendra Singh, sir. I was fortunate enough uh, to have this guidance uh, during my uh, 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 professional career when I started. So he is my first guru, actually. Professor, uh, Dr. Vijayendra Singh, sir, he is my first guru, like uh, in the uh, like professional field. So, thank you, sir, for all these uh, guidance. Now, Dr. Vijayendra Singh, sir. Dr. Arun. Sir, sir. sir. Dr. Vijayendra Singh, hai? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, Now, pharmacovigilance. Actually, pharmacovigilance is a French word, basically. And, uh, uh, this was coined by this term was coined by Professor Ben uh, like uh, and uh, I had an opportunity to work with him in the France during my stay uh, in the University of Bordeaux, uh, which I attended as a part of the fellowship program uh, offered by Ministry of Science and Technology Government of France. And there I uh, went uh, and learned the techniques of the pharmacovigilance, drug safety, and pharmacoepidemiology under his guidance and under his team that included Professor Nicholas Moore, Dr. Tisnerai, scientist of the international repute. Pharmacovigilance, like if we uh, divide this term uh, into two parts, it is pharmacos and vigilance. So pharmacos means drugs and vigilance means to keep an eye. Now, what is this? So, if term pharmacovigilance means the science and activities related to the detection, assessment, understanding, recording, and reporting of drug related problems that are reported with the use of the drug when a human being gets exposed in whatever the condition and in whatever the manner. Now, precisely speaking, this definition includes the prescription of a medicine for the indication in which it is meant for. Then, it also includes the exposure with the medicine under the off-label use. Then, it also includes the definition for any overdosage or any uh, exposure of the drug, uh, exposure with the uh, uh, expired drug alcohol, or any medication errors, which we may come across during, uh, like, uh, during our uh, uh, ingestion, ingestion of the medicine. So this is uh, so this is broadly uh, this is a broad term basically pharmacovigilance that is we have to record and report the adverse drug reactions which may get arise uh, because of any uh, of any issue that is uh, experienced when the drug is exposed to the human body. Uh, if you see uh, the European part, the Europe covers the animals also. So that is where we have the uh, like veterinary pharmacovigilance also, not only the like human pharmacovigilance which is related to the human related products, but there they have the uh, like the uh, the veterinary pharmacovigilance also. Well, that is out of the scope of this uh, discussion. Precisely speaking, uh, pharmacovigilance is something which is related to the exposure of the drug into the body. Dr. Arun. Sir. Okay. And Dr. Mujahid. Please call me Arun, sir, because we have to complete my PhD, sir. <laughs> yes. 
No issue. So you are, but you are budding uh, Dr. Arona. <laughs> All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. When we talk about that, why it is important from the Indian perspective, that is why pharmacovigilance is the need of the R. Why do we need it? From the, uh, like, uh, uh, so we can say that uh, apart from the uh, uh, the reasons, uh, operational reasons, the main reason behind is that nowadays the DC uh, that the Central Drug Standard Control Organization or Ministry of Health, it is now although it is more, it is interested uh, for the introduction of the new products in the market, to meet the unmet medical needs of the Indian patient population. But at large, it is more interested to know of the drug, to understand, to know the benefit risk profile of the drug, so that the drugs can be continued, uh, can be continuously uh, monitored and marketed in the drug. Now, uh, like uh, scientific angle, now why it is important from the other prospects also? We have a over a billion population which is growing at a tremendous rate. I often say that uh, if uh, we had an opportunity to visit uh, that uh, like uh, near to the All India Institute of Medical Sciences there uh, we have a, a clock is over there uh, like uh, which is uh, ticking uh, like uh, every um, uh, every second and every minute and we can see the, the current which is growing at a tremendous rate. We can have the like uh, live uh, uh, the uh, uh, the growth rate uh, of the uh, like uh, population in India. We are the growing Indian economy. Implementation of the general agreement on trade and tariff that is GATT and all that. Like now we are uh, like uh, we are having a uh, business agreements in, uh, across all sectors and. Uh, the pharmaceutical sectors is, has been largely affected by that, and uh, like so, that has uh, given an impetus to the Indian economy as well. That is, uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, like uh, uh, as most of the medicines manufactured from India, they are now uh, they uh, registered across the world also. The mo other most important aspect is the, that we are the second largest English-speaking population in the world. Like uh, this is a common practice that like uh, we uh, that um, uh, although we, we we will not speak our um, mother tongue or the mother language, but also but of course we will always prefer to talk to in uh, talk uh, in English and have a conversation in English. And, uh, and our research papers and our all scientific communications, they are, they are in English. Then uh, there is a regulatory overhaul. <coughs> By regulatory overhaul, we mean that like there is an uh, uh, like increment in the like regulatory activities. Uh, uh, since the implementation of the general uh, GATT and the uh, like uh, the, the uh, export and import uh, 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 Council of India and uh, like uh, the uh, intervention of them, like the uh, the regulatory processes have been made more easier and made more transparent, and uh, they, they the, some changes have been brought into the entire regulatory system so that a person who is sitting outside India and he can also uh, like have an idea onto the regulatory process of the India and he, he doesn't need to. Have any uh, like um, any uh, any, any uh, like um, uh, uh, ground support from uh, like um, uh, uh, to have an Indi from the Indian base. Next is the we are the fourth largest exporter by volume of drugs and biologicals, especially generics to the U.S. Let me share an interesting fact with you. Uh, do you know that? Every seventh child in this world gets vaccinated from the by the vaccine manufactured from India. So we are the largest exporter of vaccines uh, which are supplied to the WHO and UNICEF 
to the country specific uh, like the uh, immunization programs uh, like uh, through, uh, across the world which are taken up by the uh, the respective countries towards the offices in delhi and mumbai so seeing all those needs actually the the country like us and japan they have opened up their local offices in the major metropolitan cities which are the business hub that is in delhi and mumbai to uh, to scrutinize the documents related to the registration uh, for the manufacture and market of the drug in their respective countries so that the hazards they can be minimized uh, to a larger extent so so with this we can imagine that like uh, we are not only incredible uh, from a culture point of view but we are incredible from the uh, like each and every aspect as uh, uh, like uh, you can see very well uh, see from these uh, upon uh, these uh, like aspects which are being discussed yes when we talk about something uh, related to the career options or something like that or uh, like when we tap some market then we need to have considerable knowledge on the market size opportunity as well as it gives a motivation that how much will be the demand and supply will be there and how we can meet out that demand and supply so if you see uh, like the uh, let me just uh, roll it down yeah this source was accessed on 23 september 2020 and uh, i found one interesting uh, like information that in 2018 the pharmaco vigilance market which was about uh, 4.3 billion dollars now it is expected to have a cumulative annual growth rate at the rate of 10.6% and it is expected to reach to dollar 8.9 approximately 9 billion dollars by 2025 and which is not uh, too far uh, it is just a four of it is for it is a matter of four five years from now so with this we can see that like uh, uh, like uh, how much uh, is the like market size and uh, with this we can very well imagine that how this market will be fulfilled where the expertise from the different fields from the respective domains from the subject experts and uh, the uh, the uh, requ uh, requirement at every level will be required across the uh, industry so when i say about the industry the industry doesn't mean the uh, the uh, manufacturing and marketing industry that is precisely uh, when we talk about any pharmaceutical company like a medicare or like uh, a bot or a sun pharma or something like that like it, it, it doesn't include only the manufacturers and marketers the service level organizations as well like for example the contract research organizations and uh, the uh, the service level organizations uh, which mainly take the uh, bit of the part of the work pharmaco vigilance and the drug safety related work uh, from the uh, like a marketing authorization holder that is a pharmaceutical company and they they do and conduct all that work on behalf of him and they submit that work to them for their further submission to the uh, uh, regulatory uh, requirement or further needful to be done by the by the pharmaceutical companies so with this like we can very well imagine that like uh, uh, like uh, how the growth uh, will be there across the industry that is not only in the pharmaceutical industry which is engaged in the manufacturing and market but also into the knowledge processing organization as well as the in the bpo that is business processing organizations as well so uh, it is because that pharmacovigilance activity it does not include only a one set of activity or a one activity pharmacovigilance or drug safety uh like uh, they uh starts right from the beginning when some information is received on an advert drug reaction related to the use of a medicinal product in from any source now this source may include the source may be the general public the source may be media the prescriber that is a prescriber may also report 
but like a consumer can also report that is uh, like uh, I, I, we can have a report from the media as well we can have the report um, from the scientific journals as well so first of all screen out those adverse reaction reports on a proactive basis then those reports are then analyzed into the company database so for that we have to make the reports valid whether we have to identify whether the adverse reaction information is coming to the company whether it is valid or not is identified on the basis of four criteria those four four criteria mainly involve have an information of a suspected medication that is the the medicine that the patient took then we should have the details of the patient which may include gender weight height nationality is a is a date of birth um, like uh, initials as well then we should have the information on the um uh, 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 reporter information that is who reported it then we should have an information on the no uh, we should have an identifiable patient we should have an identifiable drug we should have a uh, 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 drug identifiable reporter identifiable adverse drug reaction that is what happened what happened to the uh, patient so these based on these four criteria we make the report as a value reports are entered into the database they are then analyzed they are then the uh, for, uh, like analyzed for the uh, to to prepare the periodic safety update reports which is a cumulative report which is an aggregate analysis is conducted by some uh, like the uh, personnel who are uh, having experience of more than 6 to 10 years right? like that that i'll come later on so now uh, 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 let us conclude this slide that is the far, that is the pharmaco business market size so as i said that like the this uh, the increase in the cagr rate uh, to 10.6% is going to give uh, an impetus to the requirement of the pharmaco business in, in that is in the drug safety domain uh, uh, for the uh, uh, like students who are looking for their career in the pharmaceutical fields now uh slide just to let the audience make aware that what are the requirements for a pharmaco vigilance that is what are the what is the essential requirements to enter into this field uh this red dot uh, like circle it says that uh, like uh, this is this is a this is an excerpt which has been taken from the european commission that is ema website and this says that a qualified person shall be in possession of a diploma or other evidence of formal qualifications awarded on completion of a university course of study or a course recognized as equivalent by the member state concerned here member state means european member states extending over a period of at least 4 years of theoretical and practical study in one of the following scientific disciplines now this is very important the disciplines may be pharmacy that is a b pharm is also eligible it may be an ambibius it may be a bachelor in veterinary sciences he may be an ambibius also he may be a simply msc in chemistry or m pharm in chemistry he may be an m pharm in pharmaceutical chemistry or msc in pharmaceutical chemistry tech am tech or msc biotech or something like that or maybe biological graduate bi biology graduate so if you see the overall uh, the uh, the, uh, the, the the requirement in the europe so they even uh, like um, i have seen that they uh, they require they recruit the people from the different backgrounds including the life sciences background also so they are the uh, so they are very flexible in that sense uh, here the catch is that the important aspect is that if a person who is a responsible person for pharmaco vigilance a medically qualified person then 
it is an responsibility or it is incumbent on the part of the uh, like a marketing authorization holder to provide him an access to a medically qualified person. So the, qual the qualified person for pharmacovigilance or a responsible person for pharmacovigilance will be uh, maybe a doctor or maybe a non-clinician also. If he is a non-clinician or if he is not a doctor, uh, uh, then he should have an access to a medically qualified person. Let me cite my example. I am MPharm and PhD with the postdoctoral qualification. But I am not a doctor. I am not a clinician. Although I am a responsible person, I am a, uh, I'm, I'm a certified qualified person for a pharmacovigilance from WHO and our society that is International Society of Pharmacovigilance. I need to have an access to, the, to a medically qualified person. So to uh, discuss and to uh, take the final opinion on the uh, medical aspects of the adverse reaction reports. So this is how the uh, the uh, uh, the systems in the pharmacovigilance has to work, and the organizations has to work uh, like when they engage a, a, a person to, uh, to be responsible for the pharmacovigilance activity. Yeah, uh, Doctor Arun. That's us. Hello. Uh, let me just ask you, uh, like uh, when we were planning this session, you told me that there will be a few students who will be from the international... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, right? they're, 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 they're listening to you and some uh, one person asked your email ID also in chat box. Okay. Uh, may I know to which country actually he belongs? They actually they are from Nigeria and some maybe from Ethiopia as well. Most of them are from Nigeria. Oh, no. yes, that's great. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. I have covered that actually. I have covered that because we have businesses in African, South African markets, including Nigeria and Ethiopia. So I have covered that also. I have covered. Yes. I have covered. They are there. They are listening to you. Okay. Uh, can I say? Can I uh, uh, like? Uh, yes, sir. Any international student, please talk to sir. Hassan Abu Bakar. Hello, sir. This is Mr. Kelly. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Hello, yes. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I, I request both the fellows, both the students uh, from the international, uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, Nigeria and Ethiopia, uh, please, uh, like, uh, because you have the, uh, uh, like, in your country, you have the great uh, prospects and aspects in this drug safety field. Because right now, the South African markets, they are heavily emphasizing on the, uh, like, the drug safety aspects. Come across many auditors uh, like here in India as well, and uh, like uh, they have come and uh, inspected uh, from your countries, and uh, they have seen our systems, and uh, now this has become uh, a, an important aspect uh, uh, to include the pharmacovigilance uh, uh, study and data in the registration dossier that we file for the uh, to seek permission for the manufacturing and marketing of the drug in the Nigeria and Ethiopia. Sure, sir. Yeah. Now see, uh, Dhana. So this is uh, like very near to you, and uh, if you see, uh, it says that the qualified person for pharmacovigilance. I'm I'm showing this slide for the FDA Dhana. This is Dhana. So, uh, you know, uh, this is the requirement in the Ghana basically, and it says that the qualified person for pharmacovigilance, he shall have a diploma or degree in medicine, chemistry, he may be a biochemistry, he may be in biology, or any other scientific discipline to be recognized by the authority. So, this leaves a good scope uh, in the South African countries and those who are coming to study over here and uh, specifically in Sharda University, which is a, a university of uh, eminence and uh, which is recognized for its good publications and uh, 
uh, reputed faculty members uh, which uh, which have been which are engaged in the different departments and uh, uh, and uh, uh, like uh, uh, well, uh, engaged uh, to a very uh, a large extent to shape up the future of the students so that they can accommodate themselves uh, in the uh, international markets this is the uh, jordan this this slide shows the requirement of the jordan like pharmacist or doctor so the jordan demands for the pharmacist unlike the other countries then uh, in india that is what does what is the requirement in india we are saying that like uh, uh like uh, we are discussing the countries uh, like uh, 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 let me uh, tell you that in canada usa brazil and uh, in uk the uh, 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 like the personnel from the life sciences background are required if they uh, uh, like it is not that they require only pharmacists or doctors they require uh, like people from the science background in general uh, also this is a slide that shows that a pharmaco vigilance guidance document which exists and uh, for the indian pharmaceutical manufacturers that is marketing authorization holders for pharmaceutical products in india and uh, this was made effective in june january 2018 and uh, this is the latest version and this is applicable to uh, all pharma uh, pharmaceutical uh, manufacturers and the marketing authorization holders here in india so now let us see what does this say that in compliance with schedule y of drugs and cosmetics act 1940 and 9 rules 1945 one qualified and trained personnel should be authorized by the company management as pharmaco vigilance officer in charge this for dealing pv activities at marketing authorization holders organization now this pv oi that is pharmaco vigilance officer in charge should be a medical officer or a pharmacist trained in the collection and analysis of adr reports so it again emphasizes on the medical officer that is a person from the medical background or a pharmacist pharmacist but unlike other countries there are uh, the people from the biochemistry microbiology or the uh, biotechnology uh, life sciences botany zoology uh, msc uh, biochemistry and other uh, like uh, fields they have the requirements over there in their respective countries as well so let us come to the fact that like i discussed that why do we need pharmaco vigilance here in india but now seeing uh, uh, having a glimpse on the what is the pharmaco vigilance why it is needed then uh, why it is there uh, in need in india then uh, requirements of the countries that is uh, that is uh, like uh, what are the different country uh, country specific requirements to engage a person in the pharmaco vigilance activities now this slide shows that why do we opt for pharmaco vigilance uh let me share an interesting fact with you uh from masters of pharmacy in pharmacognosy and phytochemistry so uh so that i'm from background that uh, made an interest uh in the uh, first industry that i joined them that they wanted to integrate uh, the, uh, the my, my learning in that of uh, pharmacognosy and phytochemistry into the clinical research field so eventually i got an i got uh, dropped into the clinical research field and from there it turned into the pharmacovigilance and drug safety aspects you will be amazed that the industries across uh, uh, like not only in india but from the outside india also they are engaging the person from the indian markets as well as from the bangladesh markets because here the uh, uh, the investment on the human capital is very less 
say for example if we do the pv activities by remaining in the countries like us canada or brazil or something like that where the entry of a one case report it is usually charged something around 100 us dollars whereas in india the, the indian uh, in indian scenario only like 30 us dollars are sufficient so the, that work can be done in a 30 us dollars and in 30 us dollars like uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, they, they will still earn the profit so what i offer form of vigilance number 1 uh, the entry field is as a drug safety associate that is a person from a fresher person or a with a two years of person experience they are usually engaged in the data entry or the case validation process it means that a person or a fresher or a two year with a two year within the time he completes two to three years he is engaged in the data entry activities of the adverse drug reaction case reports and also into the validation of the case reports validation means he has to identify medication a suspected drug suspected idea and the reporter information then when he gets an experience uh, in, in in the respective domain and completes 2 to 3 years then he is elevated to a next step which is the medical coding adverse drug reactions or the adverse events which are reported they are actually coded medically and we use a medical dictionary which is approved by the who and it usually the cost varies from the uh, company size this is the like uh, policy of the who that is if the company size is very small then they will give the version of that dictionary in a very cheap amount and to institutions it is free actually institutions it is free of cost whereas with the pharmaceutical industry they charge something around it depends on the 2 lakhs to the 10 lakhs actually depending on the size of the company so they they charge it for one year and in one year there are two versions of the dictionary which are uh, reviewed at the interval of the 6 months so that is used for the medical coding now i will just tell you what is medical coding medical coding means say for example if a person has is reporting a rise in body temperature with the use of a medic a medicine or a fever so that fever will be reported as a pyrexia we will have to report the fever to the regulatory authority or in the report we will have to write fever as a pyrexia we cannot write the fever as a fever because that is a uh, like the uh, layman language fever so we will have to uh, like code it into the international language like the way uh, we have studied the iupac names in the chemistry where we used we where we do not use the common names of the organic compounds but we use the uh, like uh, uh, iupac names uh, so that the compound is known with the iupac name across the world the medical coding is do, is done for the same purpose then the uh, next is the narrative writing then the uh, here uh, the person is gets engaged in the narrative writing that is he has to write the whole sequence of the events and uh, <coughs> narrative writing is then presented and then it is sent to the regulatory authorities in a reportable format so writing so medical writing means uh, this skill is acquired when a person uh, like a uh, Every time in this uh, like domain, like say for example two to three years, then after that he is uh, given uh, the next level task that is preparation of the analysis aggregate reports, which we call them. Say for example, like we have uh, the uh, uh, reports of hundred patients in our database. So aggregate, we will have to uh, present the data in a cumulative way, and we have to write the uh, all the analysis in an uh, like aggregate way and present the data to the regulatory authority. the team lead team lead means where the role of the role of the people management comes that is where a person uh, like where the managerial role comes so in the managerial roles uh, like uh, uh, the person's uh, key responsibility areas mainly include the timely del deliverable of the tasks as well as the management of the uh, like the team members uh, for the day to day scientific activities as well as for the uh, other uh, uh, like uh, Um, uh, managerial capacities then uh, once a person acquires the 7 to 10 years of experience then he gets uh, elevated to the another role which is 
the role of a director of pharma vigilance operations where uh, he is responsible for management of global pharma vigilance activity so right now like if i talk about my position then i started actually right from the position number 1 and now right now i am at the position number 5 to the head of the global pharma vigilance department where i have to uh like collaborate and communicate and i am responsible for the uh, compliance of the global uh, pharmaco vigilance regulatory requirements for the company and not for the company but for the business partners also uh, as well so there i am uh, so there if i talk about my role i have to see like uh, the uh, the deliverables of the tasks related to the periodic submission of the uh, uh, like uh, safety update reports then the reporting of the adverse reaction reports on the expedited basis and uh, the um, signing of the all pharmacovigilance related agreements that is safety data exchange agreements uh, that is wherein we sign some uh, like agreements related uh, to the process that how the safety data will be exchanged among us and the business partner so they are all uh, activities like uh, i have to take care uh, like the senior role so uh, naturally uh, so when we uh, talk about now let us come to the salary prospects now when we talk about the now uh, the salary prospects like uh, as far as the recent industry trend is going on like they are here to be fresher to two years of experience they are usually engaged to a salary of 20000 to 30000 uh, per month month actually then after 5 years it is 70000 to 1 lakh per month then after 10 to 12 years it is more than 1.25 lakhs per month and uh, like uh, as and when uh, it can it, it gets negotiated with the marketing authorization holder it all depends on the negotiation skills as well as uh, on the requirement of the company as well and uh, the competency of a person uh, like who is facing uh, 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 like uh, and the interview as well as the who is facing the management uh, to come into that room so this is uh, like um, uh, the, this was a monetary aspect which may uh, give a, a like lucrative option uh, to the budding uh, drug safety um, scientists who are looking forward for their future career in this field if we go into the onto the growth prospects like we can see that the pharmaceutical companies like mncs and the indian pharmaceutical companies uh, including the biotech companies like modi mundi dr reddy's biofarm glenma hinta san pharma they engage people for the pv activities then there are clinical research organizations like max neiman quintiles gvk vida nexus these processing organizations are also there like accenture wipro kinaps yes regulatory solutions and quintiles etc then of course regulatory agencies like dcgi and cdsco if you know that the, the uh, like uh, all our pharmaco vigilance activities are centrally monitored uh, by the indian pharmacopeia commission uh, based uh, having its office uh, head office at uh, ipc ghaziabad uh, rajnagar so uh, earlier uh, the it was to aims but now the entire uh, like um, uh, uh, the activities are managed by the india pharmacopeia commission and there is a pvpi cell is there that is pharmacopeia program in india is uh, is run uh, from there and uh, usually every year 25 to 30 uh, like drug safety associates uh, like are uh, engaged uh, over there for the pv activities and they are given the uh, like uh, starting salary of 35 to 40000 uh, per month uh, like the uh, remunerations as announced by the government of india so if we uh, the pharmaco vigilance is a rewarding career uh, the uh, other uh, uh, like uh, careers which are uh, there in the field where uh, can, where can we study the pharmaco vigilance uh, well apart uh, like they are actually uh, dipsar it offers specifically pharmaco vigilance of m pharma in clinical research so uh, uh, dr arun uh, does this uh, sharda university also offers uh, m pharma in clinical research no sir not yet it used to be earlier in the beginning they okay. started clinical research uh, master degree course but now it is not there but some clinical trials are going okay. on in the hospital and some department is there in the hospital as well related to clinical research okay fair enough fair enough yes. 
so but uh, anyhow even the m farm in pharmacology those who are uh, like a b farm m farm or uh, like they and the and the uh, those who are having the bsc or msc degree if they can have the some certificate programs in the pharmacovigilance which is usually offered by some uh, private agencies like uh, there is one catalyst uh, organization is there catalyst clinical services is there uh, say they offer uh, like a distance module program and in fact hunger university it also offers uh, the uh, uh, like uh, the uh, contact program as well as the distance module program so there uh, the, uh, the the uh, advantage of those programs can be taken uh, to have uh, to, to have the in depth knowledge of the pv field to have an entry in this field i just included this because uh, just to show that uh, there was a paper masters uh, degree paper which was submitted by someone in the uh, north uh, carolina university on the core competencies for drug safety for pharmacovigilance prof professionals so there uh, like this uh, thesis title was that like but to uh, like uh, uh, like up to what experience and up to what level the person should be engaged in which type of pharmacovigilance activity so it it was actually it, it, it uh, just paved the way Uh, for the, um, the pharmaceutical companies uh, to know about the uh, like the core competencies for drug safety uh, uh, pharmacovigilance professionals that is uh, the uh, the uh, various the uh, they come through uh, so uh, as per the experience they can be engaged in the different activities i feel myself incomplete uh, if i don't uh, Uh, include this slide uh, as a, as the ambassador of the PVT program, like uh, uh, to disseminate the information that is what is happening in India. So we have uh, in India, like uh, there is, uh, you see, uh, I'm just taking my cursor over here. You see, this uh, is a helpline number one eight zero zero one eight zero three zero two four. So this is a number that has been released by the uh, Pharma PVPI to report. on the adverse drug reaction related information by the general public or by the practitioners or anybody uh, like uh, to uh, to pharmacovigilance program in india so then those, those reports can be included uh, in their database and based on those reports the decision can be taken uh, like uh, 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 for any recall or for any Uh, warnings to be added in the package and search, or for any precautions, or for any uh, adverse or reaction information uh, that can be uh, like uh, uh, that can be uh, uh, added or uh, modified in the uh, like uh, uh, package and search. Till now, I'm just at the end of the, my presentation. But before this, uh, like I would like to just share one interesting part. Like maybe uh, many of us. Would have seen the package insert uh, along with the medicine, uh, like which come, which we usually take for any use for any diabetes, hypertension, or hyperlipidemia, or whatsoever it may be. So actually, that package insert is a very important document from the pharmacovigilance aspect. Uh, the, uh, that contains the informations like um, uh, uh, warnings and precautions for use, then adverse events, then overdosage. Then uh, usage in pregnancy, lactation, and then uh, effect on uh, uh, of the medicine on ability to drive and use of machines. So all those aspects they come under the under the category of the safety aspects of the drug, and they have to be incorporated into the package insert. And this package insert actually acts as a channel of communication between the pharmaceutical company and with the diff and the, the stakeholders, including but not limiting to the consumers and prescribers. Dr. Arun, I hope like this has been already 55 minutes since speaking, and uh, this is myself, uh, my the cursor I'm putting, and this is uh, Dr. Chris Bedai, and this is Professor Nicholas Moore, and uh, like uh, this uh, lady is S. D. Gulmez, and so this was the team, and uh, I, I and uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to study. Uh, the pharmacovigilance in that department who actually conceptualized the idea and who incepted this term uh, like uh, and who coined this term like as i told you professor benna bego he was the person who actually coined this term and more 
However, the place where I was, it was actually known in the world, three things mainly. Bodo, we call it as, we, we don't call it as a Bodiox, we call it as a Bodo. So Bodo is known for his uh, uh, football. Who have interest in uh, like taking uh, something like uh, who uh, have interest in drink. Like, uh, it is known for its wine actually. The world famous one, the good quality wines are there. Bordeaux is known for that. And the third one is Bordeaux is the epicenter of pharmacovigilance and pharmacoepidemiology. So all those three things were over there. So I enjoyed uh, like a uh, session with you. And I hope now the session is with us. I'm over with the session yeah. and I hope uh, I, I now open the session for the questions uh, from the students or from the uh, my colleagues, please. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the wonderful session. Uh, we will definitely welcome the uh, questions from anybody. Uh, from the student side as well as from the faculty side. Okay, I would request every uh, person, every, every student, if they want, if, if they have any kind of questions regarding pharmacovigilance or career or something, they can ask me. They can unmute yourself. Uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask okay. the directly. Uh, I think there is no question, sir. Uh, it was really a wonderful session. I would, uh, I would be happy uh, to hear from you and Peter also. And uh, uh, I would like to propose the vote of thanks, uh, respected dean, sir, honourable uh, guest speaker for today's session. I take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, I am immensely uh, thankful to Dr. Manoj Sharma, sir, for. Uh, delivering this wonderful lecture on pharmacovigilance and I extend my thanks to Dr. Vijinder sir for inspiring us to organize this session and I especially thank to all the faculty members of the uh, School of Pharmacy who are the part of it and they have motivated the students to uh, get connected to this session and last but not the least I would like to thank all the students, all the participants, uh, they have patiently listened and I heard the, uh, enjoyed this session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you again, sir, uh, Dr. Mohan Sarma, sir. Really, it's a pleasure Thank to hear you, sir. And Peter also would like to hear hear from you uh, some, some some more. Time. So again, I would request anybody if they have, have any questions. If they have any questions. Okay, sir. I think there is no question for you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much.